Thank you for joining me. I'm Teacher Morris and this is Crossover for Kids Ages 10 to 12. If this is your first time joining us, we always begin our session with a challenge. Today, you have to find the hidden crosses from the picture that we will show you later and you have to do push-ups. This is to jumpstart your mind and body before we study our lesson. For this challenge, you will need another family member. So grab your mom, your dad, your brother, or your sister. This is how we will play the game. First, you have to find the hidden crosses. Second, the family member that you have with you will do push-ups. Now, if you cannot find a hidden cross, you may trade places and vice versa. You have 30 seconds for this challenge. Stop when the time expires. Are you ready? I can't hear you. Go! Stop! So, how did you do? Were you able to find the 10 hidden crosses? How many push-ups did you make? <laughs> Are you still with me? I hope so. More than just enjoying the challenge that we give every week, it is important to keep your mind sharp and bodies fit. So, I hope you will set aside time to read your Bible and also take time to exercise. Now, let us continue with our series called Hide and Seek. Our focus is on sin and temptation. Last week, we have learned that as followers of Jesus, we should be Christ-like. Okay, let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, fill us with your Spirit. Give us wisdom to understand our lesson. Guide us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, what are you thinking right now? Do you think of playing games around the house? Online, maybe? Are you thinking of social media? Are you thinking of what you will post later in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok? Or maybe you are thinking of sneaking out and roam around your neighborhood. When you do these things, do you think they are okay? Do you think that it is okay if nobody gets hurt? Let's pause there for a while. You see, sin begins in the heart and mind. It is written in Matthew chapter 15, verse 19, For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, slanders. This has something to do with what we will be talking about today. Let us now read from Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 14. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned for until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses, even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the offense of Adam, is a type of him who has to come. To better understand, let us try to take time to study each section of the text. The Apostle Paul's letter focuses on the revelation of God's righteousness in his plan for salvation. This is the gospel. It's addressed to believers or followers of Jesus in Rome. In our lesson, we can read about sin and its effects. First, it brings death to all men. Next, the law convicts us of sin. 
again, no one is excused even those who think that their sin is far less than what Adam did. In the problem that we are faced with today, regardless of whether we get infected or not, we will experience death in God's time. People will die of old age. People die of other sickness. People may recover, but then they will still experience death in God's time. When we think or do things that does not please God, we are committing sin according to the law given to Moses. Remember the Ten Commandments? Jesus added, when you think of doing it, you are already sinning. When you think of something bad should happen to those who do not obey the rules, when you put down the frontliners because you think they might infect you, when you keep going out for no reason. Let me just put that aside and ask you, between you and me, have you ever thought of such things? If you did, you already sinned. No one is excused from the consequence of sin. Or just as the saying goes, ignorance of the law excuses no one. You will pay a fine. You will be imprisoned. You will do community work. If we do nothing about sin, we will experience death and eternal suffering. The different kinds of sinners are listed down in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. But for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All of them will experience eternal death and suffering. So what it means for us is that we should say no to sin. Saying no to sin is not a walk in the park. You will face temptation. People will doubt you. You will doubt yourself or you will doubt God. You will be tested by your circumstance. But again, as a follower of Jesus, say no to sin. You should obey God's commands, which you can find when you read the Bible. One example is to obey people in authority. Keep yourself free from thoughts and feelings that are not pleasing to God. Think of things that are holy and pleasing to God. Receive comments and suggestions from others with an open mind, but only consider which ones will please God. Remember to consider others better than yourself. No matter what circumstance you are in, always lift it to God in prayer and seek wisdom through His Word. Trust God to protect you and provide your needs. Share the gospel and fellowship with others so they would experience the full blessing of being a follower of Jesus. Sharing the gospel and meeting to study God's Word online. Do you find our lesson overwhelming? Yes, it can be. So my suggestion is to go over our lesson again after we end with your parents and try to understand more. And if you have questions, then discuss it with them as well. Are we good so far? Okay. Our memory verse is from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Wow! There is no escaping God. He knows everything from your thoughts to your actions. But remember, God will help you to say no to sin. But first, you need to have Jesus in your let us pray Father God please help me to uncover the sin in my life forgive me for being disobedient and stubborn Lord Jesus please come into my life and be my Lord and Savior thank you Father God for sending your son Jesus 
to pay for the penalty of sin, its forgiveness, and eternal life. All these things I pray. Amen. Here are some additional questions for you to discuss with your family or friends online. Let's talk. What sinful thoughts have you been keeping in your mind? What small sinful things have you been doing? What will you do to say no to sin? Thank you for watching. If you have been blessed by our video today, send your comments, like and share our posts, check our other videos and downloadable content just for you.